Welcome to the Spark of Splendor podcast, where we celebrate everything creative about you. And thank you so much for being here today. Um, Our special guest, Sundar Ananda, who I met at the Bhakti Center. He is a wonderful community leader who does so much for the Bhakti Center, a community that I'm a part of. Thank you for being here, Sundar Ananda, and for bringing your light and your wonderful, blissful energy. Thank you so much, and welcome to this Spark of Splendor podcast, which really is an invitation to celebrate your beautiful spark of creative splendor, which is the gift that's been given to you by divinity, and it is who you are, so thank you. Thank you, Prastu. You you are a spark of spl- <laughs> a splendor, truly. <laughs> you you bring in joy to everyone, and so I can I can vouch for that because I've seen you doing that at the at the Bhakti Center, and yeah, it's uh it's wonderful you know being here and talking to you. Uh, yeah, so whatever uh, we can can go through anything, and yeah. Thank you. This is so. This is very new. And I'm also learning and experimenting. So I appreciate you encouraging me on my journey. As I was sharing this with you, I felt so much openness from you, an invitation of like, what are you up to? What's going on for you? And it felt so natural to share that I was doing this. And the fact that you even offered to come forward and like be a part of it, like your openness just invited that spark and more of this type of connection which is not surprising given that um, one of the things you were just sharing with me before uh, we started recording was just around how your inspiration to really help facilitate community and bring community and build community where people are able to do the inner work of cultivating their relationship with their own supreme with the soul and also Mm -hmm. the magic that happens when we do that in community yes 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 absolutely so would you like to speak a little bit about what brought you here a little like from from your childhood or through your adulthood and like just some of like um a background into your journey from coming into the spiritual path and also um, cultivating some of these beautiful practices that you're currently. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so I was uh, actually my, my childhood was, was in India, in Mumbai, in the, uh, in the, um, well, chaotic and diverse city of Mumbai. It's a a little bit like New York on a smaller scale. And um, so, so growing up, I, I used to wonder, I was from, from a background where, you know, where my parents were pretty devout, religious, they used to instill good, good, um, good cultural and values and principles in me. And then I used to wonder aloud and, and give my parents like a, a, I mean, a hard time um, to trying to understand why, if we do so much in terms of, of pious activities, we are still seeing that, you know, India in general is still going through a lot of of difficulty, uh, and this used to used to bother me a lot. And then I used to see oppression of women, uh, not only in India but in other parts of the world. And then so why that you know happens, and then uh, going for uh, and uh, touching on the topic of you know and cruelty to against you know animals, why that happens, whether you know it's you know what can be done, and so on and so forth. So. So why are bad f- things happening in the world? Why, why, why are bad things happening in the world? Why are bad things happening to good people? So, yeah. so those good questions. And what am I? Who am I doing? And what? What? Uh, I mean, who am I? And what am I supposed to be doing? Right. So the, these questions kept plaguing me. And then finally, I, I ended up doing my master's at, at Texas A and M. I came to the U.S. and then for higher studies and in pursuit. And then after that. S- Somewhere along the way, I came across this path of of, of bhakti. Uh, I was handed a book of of the Bhagavad Gita you know, by devotees in in Texas, and mm-hmm. that got me you know started. Uh, and then f- since since then, I've been I've been involved with the the bhakti tradition, 
and the bhakti movement here, especially in New York City at the at the Bhakti Center where I met you, Parastu. And um, so, so where I see wonderful people like you who are all working together uh, to actually to um, to come together to experience, you know, inner happiness. Uh, we are all in pursuit of of something, right? We all have these the questions going on like what am i supposed to do how do i be happy how do i get to a place where i can actually make make others happy in the in the process and so uh, so to answer your question i found that this whole tradition where we have diverse um you know, backgrounds you know people from from various communities you know, come together and serve this whole uh mission together uh, that's what you know, inspires me and so hence here's um and here I am. And then along the way, recently, I've been involved in a few initiatives uh, that have been, you know, brought to me by, um, you know, by realizations from, you know, from others. And if you, if you want, I can, I can mention some Yeah, of this. I'd love to see. I'd love to see. So when you say um, inspired by realizations from others, can you just speak a little bit more about what you mean by that? Yeah, sure. So, so case in point, very, very specifically, this was, uh, uh, and, and we were chatting about the Govardhan Eco Village called GEV for short. Uh, this is located outside Mumbai in, in India. And it's, it started as a rural or a farm community. And then eventually it, it blossomed into a wonderful space where there, you know, where there's yoga performed, you know, kirtan, people come together to understand, you know, philosophical and very advanced topics and also something that could you know, improve their lives so so in a place like sustainable, that I, sustainable community like everything aren't they like harnessing the rainwater and then it irrigates the plants and then there's mm -hmm. like a whole relationship it was designed by all these scientists and so much like went and i guess the core philosophy is simple living and high thinking Simple living and high thinking, exactly. Just, just like you. And and just a side note: whenever you uh, you, you get into this thing where you soak in and let the whole uh, in a moment re reflect on it, that that actually is uh, is very calming. And uh, you know, I like that. So what what you're doing right right now, basically. <laughs> so thank you. I I so appreciate that encouragement, Sundar Ananda. Thank you so much. It really is like. I spent some time in the eco village and I experienced at one point I remember walking through um, and there was like a thousand butterflies, just like <laughs> thousands of butterflies. I, I don't even know how many butterflies. I can't even count the number, but there was like a kirtan going on, like devotional singing. There was like a little mountain. It was like a little Govardhan uh it's a recreation. The whole place is also a recreation of Vrindavan, a town. Yeah. So there's this, um, a, a by that little Govardhan Hill part of the eco village, there was a kirtan happening. And then I walk through and I just see like so many butterflies. It was just an unlimited number. <laughs> and it really felt like, like you had mentioned the magic of what happens when the people from diverse backgrounds come together. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. You mentioned about, about the butterflies, thousands of butterflies Re recently at the Bhakti center, we had a, a short discourse, a class by in Shubhvelas Prabhu. And okay. uh, he was explaining about this small story slash, you know, pastime about for hundreds and thousands like of butterflies, you know, coming and sitting on, you know, Krishna, the cowherd boys, his friends, uh, the cowherd girls and so on. And they were all, uh, you know, initially like a little scared because they hadn't seen so many, you know, so many insects together and they were all small, small kids. But then it turned into this whole, uh, color fest like like you describe it it was so phenomenal and i really felt like these souls these butterflies each one is a soul that is like transcendental because they're here they're in the eco village they're in the kirtan and they were just making this forest even more magical than it already was and to be able to experience something like that and to see that that's your commitment is to create that and i see how you do that at the bhakti center and also with the projects that you're working on. So thank you so much for bringing that to the world. Yeah, yeah, sure, Parasu. So yeah, so coming back to the project. So um, so, so so we'd like to create something similar in the um, in the vein of the of the 
of, of the Govardhan and Eco Village, where uh, we would like to show people that there is um, a great lifestyle out there that we can uh, incorporate in our in our own lives. You know, wherever we are, we don't have to all pack up and move to GV or Govardhan Eco Village, but we can actually uh, in, in, imbibe you know some of those uh, of those. Uh, um, Oh, how do I put it? You know the the whole environment that they have going on, where where people come together in this, this natural you know space. So uh, if we can, I'd like to share my screen quickly and show sure. you the Yoga Chanti you know, website that I've been trying to put together. Uh, let me see if we. We're just really a platform for community building and getting people to understand and learn about uh, yoga culture and yeah, bhakti. Yes, yes, about bhakti Ex exactly. So, so yeah, this is uh, yoga chanti was an effort. I'll just head over to the uh, inspirations page. Um, so this comes you know, primarily from Radhanath Swami, who uh, you know who guides many of us at the at the bhakti center, along with uh, other other teachers and uh, and practitioners of this of this bhakti movement here in New York. Um, so yeah, so he's written a few books, which we have mentioned there, The Journey Home and The Journey Within. Uh, and then so, so yeah, so this is Paulina, who, um, um, you know, who's now residing in, in Poland. And she actually uh, inspired this whole idea of the, um, of, of Yoga Chanti, actually. She's the one who, who suggested the name. And uh, she is, uh, I give her in frequent updates on where we are and what we're doing. She's a yoga teacher. And she's doing her own wonderful thing there. Um, this together with so there are three or four people who are you know primarily responsible for me you know, starting this. Uh, there's Radhanath Swami, like I showed you. There's has Paulina who suggested it. There's my wife Amala Gopi. Uh, she actually uh, gives me the space and the whole ability to uh, to uh, to try out these things. Um, you know, to experiment with uh, various um, ways of, of of achieving this whole um, community and these initiatives and, and projects that I'm trying to be involved in. So soon I'll have a section on her, uh, just trying to find out that I, we, we went for a few yo yoga kirtan programs together with my kids, which I'll show you. And we still are in the process of, you know, of putting some of those we had like a busy year during the, during the summer, as you can see, all these dates are from earlier this year, 2023. Uh, we went out to various yoga studios and yoga centers and did um, you know, Kirtan there. This is about more on a few Bhakti Center. Um, and that's something you're leading is like, you're putting it out there that, hey, we're here. And if you want to do like uh, chanting in, in a circle with other people in, congregation with others mm -hmm. then you are available to lead these kirtans and you do that with your wife and children yes 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 exactly you you got it right uh, let me see if i can head over to instagram which you're looking at earlier see if this works properly this time so so we're heading to yc kirtan where right, right, i have some of these videos that are posted uh this for instance is one where i'm leading kirtan um no no, no I, um no, actually, my son Sham is leading Kirtan, and then I'm around there and it's just supporting uh, some of the yoga students are just listening in. Um, and then here's another one from Brandy Bissell, also known as Radharani. Uh, she's doing Kirtan, and there are my kids uh, do doing Bradangam and you know support. And these are the you know, yoga students who are participating. So, so, so yeah, Paras, so the idea was to build this whole community of, and it's just got, you know, started. It's literally like in the infant you know, stages now, and it'll probably be there for a while. But then the whole idea is to, is to have this uh, whole community, you know, built online and then, um, and then connect with like-minded souls to, to make the magic happen. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I so appreciate it. And I'm sure that other people also appreciate and continue to benefit from what you're sharing, which is really an offering from your heart. Uh, something you shared, I'm just reflecting, you were talking in the beginning about how your, you know, you were asking your parents some questions Yes. as a kid and like trying to understand, you know, these bigger questions of who am I? Why am I here? Why are bad things happening to good people? 
So what happened in your own life as you met people, as you met the devotees that you met in Texas, and as you started to, like, what was the transformation and, and what was the insight that really shifted how you saw things and, and finally answered some of the questions that you had? Yeah, yeah. I think the whole thing, it boiled down to this fact of I wanted to see something which would, which could you know, explain the discrepancy that I was you know, observing between the the Vedic times, which which basically means the times of yore where we had these uh, great um, sages. Saintly huh, sorry? Kings. Saintly, Saintly King. kings. Saintly kings. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Like, I don't kings. see any saintly kings right now. We don't see any saintly kings now. Okay. Oh, you don't think the person who we had of we've had a few a few saintly presidents or no? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's actually I'm glad you mentioned that because I remember being a kid and saying, I wish I could meet saints in my life. Like I remember thinking that really, really strongly. Like, how wonderful would it be? And it's amazing to see that when people really look at knowledge or the Vedas and are wanting to live it, like you said, not just to like theoreticize, but to actually apply it, how the nature of the soul is actually saintly. Mm, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So so we'd like to see it in in, in person, like you said, uh, in, in the flesh, right? So so I had that going on where we would hear all these, you know, stories and descriptions of the um, of the Vedas and the you know ancient traditions and how and everyone was happy the saintly kings were ruling and then things were good and then now we have this this present time where there are a lot of things getting exploited there are women that are being exploited like like Radhanath Swami my guru loves to say uh, we need to use things and uh, and love people but then we end up doing it the other way around in these days we we use people and we love things unfortunately so. So yeah, so this whole thing of of seeing the you know whole oppression towards women, towards uh, you know cruelty against you know animals, where we you know slaughter and you know eat eat animals and so on, and I couldn't put these two things together. So so I kept asking around. I attended a few retreats, but I couldn't get the answers just right. Then when I came to Texas and I was and you know, I handed this copy of the of the Bhagavad Gita, I read through those where Prabhupada, the um, founder of of this movement of Krishna consciousness, uh, he explains how there was a certain time when these these rituals or sacrifices were so um, you know potent, and the people who were you know who were performing it also had the strength. So you actually would would be able to see an an old horse and enter the fire, and out would come a young, uh, um, I mean a young horse. Uh, all, all full of youthful energy, and that was a true test of the of the Vedic mantras that were being chanted. So mm -hmm. this this seemed okay. So there was a time when this worked, and now, unfortunately, because of the degradation of the age and all the you know, polluting the factors we have, the environment and everything going on, there's this pollution of the heart, this pollution of the of the ecosystem, and this actually you know, brought everything down. And hence, we are where we are. A whole twisted. Um, society where, where everything is you know is, is topsy-turvy so that i could i could understand there was a time when everything was pristine but now we are here because of so many things and then also the whole fact of being able to have one mantra one one way to come out of this you know, quagmire of, of material existence and that is the the Hare krishna mantra as we chant in kirtan as we do on on beads when we do a japa meditation so so these things they they gave me a simple, nice, and a wholesome approach to rectifying the whole um, uh, you know, problems I had with reconciling you know, everything. So, so I said, if 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 someone can explain these to me so so clearly, then this must be the real thing. And then from then I decided to get more, you know, to find out more about this movement. And I still am learning, uh, but I think uh, yeah, so it can it can be of help to all of us if we do it together. The joy, like you said, is is in coming together and discovering the wonderful attributes we all have in each other and and working towards towards a common goal in in harmony mm -hmm. uh, yeah mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that thank you so much and so to this 
I'm going to ask a question because yeah, a question on this very topic of how to make sense of what's happening in the world. And there's so much suffering that's taking place. And how do we make sense out of it? And what is it that we can learn um, that can help us to put things into context? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great question, Parastu. So, um... What, what do we do as an individual? You know, we're right here, we're doing a certain job, we're in a certain role in life as a, as a parent, a friend, a teacher, a student, and so on. So what do I do, right? So the, the whole thing is that um, the first thing they say is just like how you're you know, handed down in the, you know, when, you, when, when you board a flight and the, and the air hosts and air hostesses go through this whole thing where they have showing the you know, oxygen masks and everything. The first thing they explain is you, you put your mask on yourself, although it may seem a, a selfish <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you, if you think about it, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to help your, you know, your loved one, your child, your um, elderly parent or your, or your spouse, but, but no, they say, so, so you put it on to so make sure you're okay. Then you are in a better position to help someone else. Otherwise, what ends up happening is they're suffering and you're suffering, and chances are that you're not going to be able to help anyone. So, so with that in mind, as a, as a context, the first thing we need to do is find out how to first uh, you know, purify ourselves from within and, um, and find the right you know, process, the right environment, and the, and the people to be with. So if you have the, these three things together, then automatically good, good things are, are, are bound to happen. And then once once you are in a state where you're purified, you're in a right uh, state of mind. And and let's face it, right, right, Parasto, this is not a one-time thing where you, uh, you know, flip a switch and you can claim that I hand, I hereby declare that I am purified. It's not it's not like that, right? It's an it's an ongoing you know, process. So we start that in the right place. We put ourselves in the right environment, and we start the path towards you know towards that and once we do that then we're in a better situation to help others so we invite someone else to the programs we're in that we like we feel are, are bound to improve us and to lead us to a, a, a to a, a better place and then and then we try to make things um you know happen together like like projects for instance like we spoke about uh all the wonderful things I've seen you doing at the Bhakti Center, you serve in festivals and um, mm -hmm. gatherings, events, and you're around to help when needed. So, um, yeah. So, so much. I mean, I'm so grateful to you. You're truly a shining example of that. And yeah, I'm just, as you're speaking, I'm thinking like, oh yes, it's bringing us back to what you shared about like the Govardhan Eco Village and bringing that here. And how do you do that? And like how Vrindavan is a state of consciousness mm -hmm. and how do we enter. It's, it's also a place, but it, it is also a, a way that you can, and you can enter with your mind. A state of mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. So maybe you could speak a little bit more about what that means. The Vrindavan state of mind. Okay. Yeah. The Vrindavan state of mind. True. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a nice a song or something bring down <laughs> state of mind yeah yeah that would be the ideal utopia so which means that we are all you know in 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 harmony and thinking together for for our happiness the happiness of 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 others and and when we say happiness it means like the true eternal you know joy that the soul is seeking from within uh the soul wants to be uh, wants to love and be loved uh, irrespective of who we are, any what what diverse you know, community or background we come from, uh, what what sex we are, male, female, um, you know how how and where we are in in our whole life in a spectrum. So irrespective of all these things, uh, we need to know what what makes a soul happy, and that is re reconnecting with with the divine within us. And mm -hmm. any any process that that is that is is bona fide, is genuine, and um, and it it helps us achieve this. Is to be is to be followed and accepted. 
Um, mm. So yeah, so so our primary goal in life should be to actually to seek out, uh, like, like it says in the Bible, right? Seek and you shall find. So 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 our, our main goal should be to continuously seek that as you're sitting in the New York the subway, and uh, you know. You know, wondering when I'll get to work or get home, we can we, we can just think and reflect. You know, what am I supposed to be doing with, with, with my life? I'm here right now. You know, what's what's what, you know what's happened in the past is gone. I have the future, and this is the present. I'm right in between. I'm at the juncture of the past and the present. What can I do? That's that's you know that's wonderful, and and you Parastu are the uh, oh. embodiment. <laughs> of I mean, honestly, I'm just. Uh, grateful for really wonderful people like you and the many wonderful people that I feel have just been and are teachers that are living um, this consciousness that you're talking about and believing that, that it's possible, that there's a world where we can actually respect each other, where we can respect other humans just as we would respect any animal and any living entity, like, right. Cause when the consciousness I'd heard recently, like, Oh, if we're killing animals, then it, it almost like we start to then think like, okay, it's, it's okay to kill other living entities. It doesn't like, it starts to create the consciousness versus like, if I start to have respect for one living entity, even an ant and start to see that that's a soul how does that affect my consciousness? So as long as my consciousness, like all I can really do is work on my own consciousness. And mm -hmm. I feel like so much of the suffering that's happening is from not dealing with my own consciousness and right. instead saying all the bad things, like trying to push it on someone else instead mm -hmm. of looking at, <clears throat> as we call it, like taking the anartas out of the heart, right? Which mm -hmm. is- that's the work that we're here to do, that we're here to do these processes of these practices, spiritual practices to remove those um, impurities from our heart. Right. And you also mentioned something about bona fide. You need a bona fide um, source or teacher. And it's uh, today I was in an Upanishad class with Dayal and he was talking oh, really? about okay. what makes a bona fide teacher. Uh -huh. And it was like to hear someone who is the right source and uh -huh. is firmly established in Brahman. Um, could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that that closely relates to your earlier question on the Vrindavan you know, consciousness and state of mind. So, it's, so Brahman is the is the ultimate truth or realization. So, as it says, one of the Vedic aphorisms or short truths is Atato Brahma Jignasa. Yeah, which just means now and here is the time to find out about who I am and how do I reconnect with the supreme Brahman or God. Um, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Atato Brahma Jignasa. Brahma Jignasa. Atato yeah. Brahma Jignasa. Now is the time. Now, now is the time. Here and now. What? What? Uh, you know, who am I? And what am I supposed to be doing? So, so once once we find at this whole space of where. Of what I am and and what I should be doing and who I should you know relate to and connect with to you know to achieve and progress on this path, then we can we can eventually get to that state of of Vrindavan consciousness, like you said, which just means that everything is in is in peace and harmony with with with, uh, you know, with each other. We're at peace with ourselves and at peace with everyone everyone around and that means also you know finding solutions to all these problems that plague us right that there, there's problems of global warming climate going you know out of control the wars the pestilence and so on so so yeah granted us us sitting like in a room and 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 meditating is not going to solve those all right. those problems on a on a higher scale but it starts from from within it's like the story of the uh, of the child who is uh, who was on a seashore and tossing these, you know, starfish that were lying lying on the shore and uh, you know struggling to get back in, and he was tossing a few back in, back in, and then the waves came and they washed a few more out. And a guy comes along and he says, "What, what are you doing? There's no point, right? So there, I mean, you can only cover so much of of shore." So he said, "In my world, I'm I'm making a difference. 
So, so it's like that. So we make a difference in our own worlds and our own lives, and then that that eventually will you know will magnify. It has a it has a compounding you know effect when when we do this with you know other like minded souls like you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I have I feel like we are coming at time, but I want to yes. have some more questions. Um. If that's okay, maybe we can yeah, do sure. some rapid fire questions. Yeah. Let's do let's do rapid, not rapid okay. fire like that. Rapid fire. It's like one of those you know quiz shows that you have on TV. <laughs> Start the timer now. Bing. <laughs> what is the book or books uh, that you've given the most as a gift, and why? Well, I used to have a small ju juice, ju uh, you know, juice bar like in Manhattan that I used to help with. It was called. Goloka, and we used to give away the book of of the journey home, and I feel it's a uh, it's a simple book, you know, by Radhanath Swami, which which details about his you know uh, journeys and uh, adventures on the path of 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 bhakti, discovering in inner happiness, and I think it's full of great uh, you know, stories, and it's a good book that uh, you know, starters can use to to find out about these higher truths. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. If you had the attention of the world for 30 seconds, what would you say? Oh, that's a hard one. So time starts now. <laughs> uh, well, so, so work on yourself. Find true, true happiness. Uh, see, seek the right path to be on and, and be with others who make you happy. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that beautiful and insightful and succinct under 30 seconds. Um, how has, okay. how has a failure or, a, or an apparent failure set you up for later success? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've had a quite a few, a few failures. Uh, well, so I would say that the whole, um, I described about the whole adventure right of going to various you know places and trying to find out and i guess in this process obviously i spent a lot of years of my life in trying to determine the right path for my own um, you know ventures be it financial be it in terms of um, trying to find out the right solution that i need to do and so it's been it's been a long ride however it's rewarding at the same time uh, because i think it you you learn from all your all, all your failures. It's not wrong to fail, but it's wrong to uh, not learn from our, uh, you know, from our failures and mistakes. So basically, the stepping stones. So yeah, so so all these experiences where I've gone the wrong way in terms of trying to understand, you know, what I need to do, what what projects I need to be involved in, where do I spend my um, energy, time, and 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 money, and then I've learned from those and still learning. Mm. Thank you. What Let's does open creativity up that book. mean to you? Okay, so yeah, creativity means to tap into into something that you have a lot of of passion and and um, an energy for, which brings out the best in you. So, like for instance, they say that entrepreneurs who start you know, companies, they say you, they are doing the things that they really like and care about. It's not something they're not doing it for the money you'll hear this this is the this is the undercurrent they're not doing it for the money they're not doing it for something you know special but they're just doing it just because they have a true um a true motivation for it or a true passion so so creativity would be actually um try, trying to find out what what you're 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 best at and and doing it like like not, um i mean no one said it you know better than than uh what's that nike right J just do it so I love it. I love it. Just do it. Um, how do you overcome creative blocks and moments of self-doubt? Okay. Yeah. So, so when you have a lot of self-doubt, like now, <laughs> I think what to say to your question, but, but yeah, so, so when you have a self-doubt, there are two or three things. One, we should, we should take, take solace from the fact that we have, you know, people to reach out to, you know, primarily, it all starts with, you know, uh, with a person or, or, you know, or persons whom you care about and who care about you, starting by re reaching out to them and just, and, and just expressing to them, if you can, 
if if the matter is too sensitive as as many times it is and you're not able to freely you know speak your mind or heart still the whole fact of connecting you know brings you to a space where you can actually you know tackle problems so just you know be, being with someone helps and then of course if you find any thoughts uh, quotes or scriptures that that are motivating you try, try to read a line or two here kind of from here, here and there and that's it spend time with people read a little try to get inspired um i love that and that is important to break through those creative blocks right, um, right. and and spend so. time with and spend time with nature you know we're so bogged down with devices these days like i tell yeah. my kids so just true. just take a walk outside literally just go take a walk <laughs> I love that. I hear you. That is so important. Um, Something that you would like to share about what's just been on your mind lately that we haven't had a chance to talk about. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, you mean in this call? Uh, What we haven't had? uh, Okay. We haven't. Yeah. Something that's been on your heart or your mind recently that you'd like to share with us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to find out. Um, I mean, this is this is for me myself. I'm trying to find out how to actually, you know, achieve the goals that I wish to. Uh, I think we've had a few conversations where I've mentioned that I have these, you know, ideas, but then I have to put them into into concrete steps. So that would be would be nice to have some, you know, so some direction and um, and uh, planning, concrete planning to get things really done. I mean, it's great to have all these good visions and dreams and ambitions, but at the end of the day, what what have we you know achieved? That's really important, and it doesn't have to be all in one day. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but but you have to each day you have to be taking like a little bit of step towards your goal. That's what I've heard. If you need to really achieve something huge, it's fine, but you have to be taking a, a like a tiny step. It could be a small thing, like one phone call, one email, one one thought you write down, or maybe you just you know block off a few hours a day and do that. So yeah, so concrete plans to implement what you wish to achieve. So any other closing thoughts as we come to a close? Just anything. I personally just want to, first of all. Um, acknowledge you and thank you so much Sundar Ananda for bringing your heart your desire to share um, simple living and high thinking with the world and how you're really living it and as you're saying putting on your own mask first and wanting to nourish yourself so that you are able to give to others and I see that you do that so beautifully so thank you so much yeah, yeah, I do have something back in closing. I actually have a question for you, Parastu. Okay. Uh, can you can, can can you explain to us what yeah. you do when you close your eyes and go within? <laughs> because that is going to help me. See, you can't keep asking okay. questions. You got to get some back too. <laughs> yeah, I um, it's so funny because I feel like. That is something that I my dad used to do a lot when I was a kid. I would ask mm-hmm. him a question, then he'd close his eyes and think. Mm-hmm. I think I did that for a long time. And then I try, I very consciously have tried to stop doing it. But I guess on this call, I must have, I must be a little nervous or I've been nervous that I've, I've just been like, okay, let me really go inside and try to like connect um and breathe and be like in my body in my heart and like really be present so it has been a prayer for me on this call like how can I just be really present because it's like I've got a list of questions here and I've got all these things but I'm like I really just want to be present and be able to serve Sundarananda Prabhu at this moment how can I do that how can this conversation enhance um just right now be enhancing and inspiring for our lives just in this very moment and um and life-giving so I really I don't know if I answered your question but I, oh, I think it was a That's part perfect. of me trying to reconnect mm-hmm. and like to get more centered within myself and I think that that is an art of living and hopefully I can learn to do it with my eyes open 
Oh, you're doing it. You're doing it at, <laughs> at all times with, with eyes closed and open. Yeah, yeah but that, that's something, a great takeaway and a thought for all of us to, to go within, even in the right, right in the middle of a conversation. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it, it helps. It helps. It helps to center yourself. Like for someone like me, I directly, I dive into things and then I think, but uh, I think this is this is a good way to approach. So yeah, and uh, and to serve, like you said, to find out how I can serve that's probably the best thing to ask. How can I be of service to you? Like, like you hear on phone calls, right? How may I serve you? This is the how may I serve you movement. The how may I serve you movement. I love that. I love it. And it's hard to put things to a close, but I'm going to do it. it. Is. it <laughs> is. You got to do it. Hit that button. Hit that button. Like, like, subscribe. No. <laughs> Sundarananda, you're amazing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing your heart and thank, thank you for, you for being um, just wonderful. I'm going to stop the recording now. All right.